Hey everybody, um, it's Friday again, and here I am with a vlog. Uh, it's probably going to be pretty short, and you know, I say that every time, and then I go on for practically ten minutes, so, um, but I really don't have that much to tell you today. Sorry. Um, I'm noticing, well, first of all, I just put on some lipstick, but I didn't look when I did it, so, sorry, gotta check that out. Um, and I'm also noticing bags. Nice. I've been really, really tired today, so <laughs> clearly it shows. Uh, um, no good reason, really. Just, you know, I really ought to go to bed when I start nodding off in the recliner and not after I've already fallen asleep in the recliner and then have to get back up and go to bed, so... Um, yeah, so this, today, I was almost crafty. This close. Does that count for anything? Probably not. Um, yeah, I was this close to starting the curtains that I want to make for this room. They're nothing. I mean, it's like, cut the fabric into a really long strip and hem it, and that's it. <laughs> I just, you know, it's one of those things where I feel like, it's not so much with knitting, because I can sit here at my desk and knit and still do other things. Um, but with other crafting, I find that if, you know, I feel like I have this list of things that I need to accomplish around the house before I'm free to craft, in, particularly in stuff that I have to get things out in order to do it, like the sewing machine or scrapbook supplies or whatever. So I'm curious if any of you feel the same way. like you know, whatever your craft may be, do you feel like you have to get some productive things done <laughs> before you can allow yourself to craft? I mean, you know, obviously family needs to be fed, clothes need to be washed, and, you know, not live in squalor and all of that good stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, not from a practical standpoint, like the fabric that I want to cut, it I bought it purposely long so I didn't have to piece anything together. So, um, you know, I need, practically, I need space to be able to cut it out. So I needed to get the kitchen or at least the dining room table cleared off um, so that I have some space to do it so I'm not doing it on the floor. But, um, yeah, I just, you know, it, it involves bringing the ironing board upstairs and... <sighs> I'm tired. See, I have bags under my eyes. Anyway, um, so I have been knitting this week. That's a shocker. I know that I would be knitting. But, um, yeah, so I started the February lady sweater, like Rose. Although, I didn't only do it because Rose is doing it. I've had it in my Ravelry queue for a long time. Um, yeah, so I started it, and it's going really well. I had a moment where I had gotten all the garter stuff done, all the yoke um, done, and I did the first repeat of the lace pattern, which is just four rows, so it's not a huge deal, but you do the four rows and then you put the stitches for the sleeves on holders, um, and then you continue to knit the body. Um, so I had started into the body, not very far, and realized that I had a, a mistake somewhere. I had an extra stitch. Or, yeah, no, I was missing, no, I was missing a stitch. I was one stitch short. So, I looked back and I figured I must have missed a yarn over on one of the, that two actual pattern rows. Um, and I was sure that that's what it was. And I, I fudged it and I kept going, you know, it, at that point it was so close to the beginning of the lace pattern, most, the average person would not have noticed it. Um, but then I thought, you know what, I'm always going to notice it <laughs> and I'm not going to want to take a picture of that part, you know, I won't want it, that part to show when I take pictures of it when it's finished and it's not worth it to me because it would always bug me. Um, and since I, I wasn't very far past where the mistake must have happened, I finally did end up going back and taking out those rows and actually fixing it. You know, I found exactly where it was, and it was a missed yarn over. So I fixed that, and um, so, you know, it cost me 
it cost me a little bit of time, but it's worth it in the end because now it all lines up right from the beginning and um, so I'm happier about that. So anyway, I've got it right here. I'm <clears throat> about to finish my 12th repeat of the lace. Um, and this is going to be hard to show you. Anyway, there we go. Buttonholes, lace, garter stitch, um, raglan shaping. Whee! There you go. Now you can see it. Um, so, yeah. I'm using Ultra Alpaca, which I love, but it sheds. Um, you know, not bad, but my poor computer keyboard and mouse, I'm sure, are full of red-ish fiber. So, <clears throat> at this point I just finished the lace however long I want it to be, and then I think there's some garter at the bottom, and then I go back and do the sleeves, and that's just about it. <laughs> it's worked in the round, so there's no seaming or anything, which is nice. So, um, that's really what I've been working on this week. Um, I also remembered I have a class to teach on Sunday at the yarn shop, so I'm teaching, this is for the Tilly Thomas silk, the beaded silk lace scarf that I showed you a few weeks ago, um, and I'm hoping, hoping that it goes well. Um, typically the, the few lace classes that I've done are a challenge because most of the people have not knit lace before, so not only is the whole lace knitting, you know, tiny yarn thing new and stressful, but they don't know how to read charts, and um, so this pattern is written both, it's both written out and charted, so that's nice. And I encourage people to just learn, bite the bullet and learn how to read the chart. It'll go so much faster for you, but, you know, I realize there is a learning curve, because I know I had it, so, but it really is worth it in the end. Anyway, that's about all I have to share. Um, Rosemary is absent this week. She's having commu computer connectivity issues, so we'll probably let her off the hook. I'm assuming that's why she didn't vlog. I'll have to find out the skinny on that. Anyway, see ya!